the day Feel it melt away Where time cannot find me at all Just a breath away Nothing here but heaven Nowhere but love to fall As I go within Reminds me I'm always home As I go within Quiet peace Offers something sacred There's a sweetness that waits Holy guest embrace that reminds me I'm always home. It's here that I am always home. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I just love when Aria sings that song. It's just like, okay, settle right in. Thank you, Jim. Welcome. Good to see you here tonight. It's one of those days where it feels like we should be out at the beach, so I uh, honor you for being here this evening. Uh, this is our Wednesday evening Going Within service, and uh, the intention of the Going Within service is to give you an opportunity midweek to just pause to come and find a place where you can just surrender all that's happened up until now and, and just be fully present here and invite you to reconnect and be one with the divine once again, although we know that we're never disconnected from the divine, but it's that conscious contact that we take that extra effort to be here tonight and to just spend that time within. So the way that the service goes is we spend about the first 20 minutes in silence and we go into a meditation and it's a little slower and then we'll pick it up a little after that. So I invite you to just get comfortable relax, be fully present here. And we have a beautiful new practitioner. She's not a new practitioner, but she's new to us on Wednesday evening. She is here tonight for the first time as our pulpit assistant, Deb Sadler. Welcome. It is all good because it is all God. And there is only good in God. And there's only one power. And there's only one presence. And there's only one mind. And this one mind is infinite in its potential. And infinite in its possibilities. And this one mind is divine intelligence that moves in, through, around, and as all there is. It is all divine and it is all intelligence. And God is goodness and kindness and love and peace and harmony and compassion. And I am one with this one force. I am one with this one power. And divine mind moves through me and expresses through me as spirit. For I am God expressing in my own unique form. And as this is true for me, this is true for each individual here, that we are all expressions of the divine, that we are all magnificent, that we are all love and joy and ease and grace. And I know that this evening is blessed and that each person is here by divine appointment and that the words of Reverend Debbie resonate through each individual here, touching each spirit, each soul, reminding us of the importance of kindness and the power that is love. It is all good. It is all God.
And if you'd like to light a candle. The heart of, of the world beats in me now. The light of the world shines through me.
me an instrument of your peace where there is hatred let me so Good evening. Reverend Debbie's talking about lovingness and kindness tonight. And so um, she asked me to just share a little something about lovingness and kindness. And I'm a high school English teacher. And I have to tell you, the lovingness comes easy. But the kindness is like my daily task, is to remember to be kind. And I taught my students about, I did a unit on mindfulness in the beginning of last year. And then I'm also part of an academy of law, and we teach uh, restorative practices, and so I'm always reminded, mindfulness, Mrs. Sadler, restorative, Mrs. Sadler. So I think it's something that we all share in common, that reminder that the young people give us. I'm going to read a reading out of uh, um, Ernest Holmes' uh, textbook, Science of Mind, and I looked up love, and this is what, what it directed me to, and it's from John 1334, and I read this for one of my prac classes, and it's all scratched up. Love is the central flame of the universe, nay, the very fire itself. It is written that God is love and that we are his express likeness, the image of the eternal being. Love is self-givingness through creation, the impartation of the divine through the human. Love is an essence, an atmosphere which defies analysis, as does life itself. It is that which is and cannot be explained 
It is common to all people, to all animal life, and evident in the response of plants to those who love them. Love reigns supreme over all. The essence of love, while elusive, pervades everything. Fires the heart, stimulates the emotions, renews the soul, and proclaims the spirit. Only love knows love, and love knows only love. Words cannot express its depths or meaning. A universal sense alone bears witness to the divine fact. God is love, and love is God. And I also wanted to share with you a little, I just started this book called Imagining Heaven, and it has a near-death experience in it. And this individual sees a light, and they interpret it as a son of God. And they, say, they, they report that the son of God says, what have you done with your life to show me? And the individual says, the question, like everything else proceeding from him, had to do with love. How much love, how much have you loved with your life? Have you loved others as I am loving you, totally, unconditionally? Why had I not known love like this was possible? Someone should have told me, I thought indignantly, a fine time to discover what life was all about. I did tell you, but how? Still wanting to justify myself. How could he have told me, and I have not heard? I told you by the life I lived. I told you by the death I died. And if you keep your eye on me, you will see more. Thank you, Deb. Love, 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 yep. I love that quote that you read from Ernest or that part of the book. Ah, oh, good to be here with you tonight. We are in our eighth month, which is hard to believe, right, of our year of the global vision that we've been doing here on Wednesday nights. The first and third Wednesday, I've been sharing with you the global vision, uh, a world that works for everyone. That is the global vision for Centers of Spiritual Living. And they put together this year a program that 140 of our centers are, are following along with every week. And August's theme is beauty, nature, art, and aesthetics. Beauty, nature, art, and aesthetics. That's the theme for August. And that comes from... Um, our, our global vision, the, the global heart vision. And this month, specifically, we're looking at these parts of the two. Remember, we've combined what we believe in the global heart vision, and they put it into one document that we're working off of. And there's a copy of both of those in your program if you'd like to know what they look like in their entirety. But this month in August, we're looking at we believe in eternal loving kindness, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight. We see a world which has renewed its emphasis on beauty, nature, and love through the resurgence of creativity, art, and aesthetics. We believe in the eternal givingness of life to all. We see a world in which resources are valued, cared for, and grown, and where there is a generous and continuous sharing of these resources. So those are our August themes. And tonight, as I said, we'll be looking at this idea of um, loving kindness. I'm going to start by telling you a story of the old shoemaker by Tolstoy. And it's, it's a popular story. You may have heard it before. But it's a story of a shoemaker, a cobbler, who was a very devout man. And he read his Bible often, and he read his scriptures, and he, he prayed often. And one night in his dreams, he heard Christ say to him, that he was going to be visiting him the next day. Well, you can imagine the shoemaker woke up so excited to think that Christ was coming to visit him today. He got his place all cleaned up, and he made a wonderful stew, and he put on some very nice tea, and he waited, and he waited for God to arrive. And as he was waiting, he looked out his window, and he saw a soldier, a soldier who was coming home from war, and he was tired and battered and thirsty. And the shoemaker thought, well, I'll offer him some of this tea that I've made. I have plenty of other gifts to give to, to Christ. And so he offered the soldier some tea, and he comforted him. And then he waited some more. 
And he saw outside of his window a woman who was walking with a baby, and it was really cold outside, and the woman didn't have a jacket. And the cobbler thought, well, I'll give her my blanket. That will keep her warm. And so he gave the woman the blanket. And then as the day went on, he waited and waited, and still God did not show up to visit him. And he saw a little boy, an orphan, steal an apple from a street vendor. And the street vendor was furious with the little boy and was going to arrest him. Well, the cobbler ran out, and he paid for the apple, and he gave it to the little boy. And he took the little boy into his home, and he gave him comfort, and he gave him warmth, and he gave him food. He gave him that stew that he had made. And he stayed up late into the night, waiting, waiting, waiting for God to show up, waiting for Christ to arrive, and nobody was, came. And he went to bed sad. He went to bed very sad that, that God had said he was going to come visit him, and yet he didn't. And then in his dream that evening, he heard once again the voice. And the voice said, I came to you. I came to you as the soldier. I came to you as the woman and the baby. I came to you as the orphan, and you cared for me. You fed me. You clothed me. You gave me shelter. You know, and we have that uh, Matthew quote from the Bible. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. You know, so we're talking about that kindness, that loving kindness that we offer to each other. You know, and it seems like kindness is a no-brainer, right? I mean, we're taught in kindergarten to be nice. You know, we're taught before kindergarten by our parents, be nice, play nice, be fair. You know, so it seems like, well, kindness is just a thing we know. You know, but I want to tell you, I started thinking about, it. am I kind all the time? Are you kind all the time? I mean, I'd like to say, yes, I'm kind all the time. But the truth is, I'm not. Especially in my thoughts. You know, that's where I really fall short. So Dr. Christian once said this line, and it stuck with me. He said, is it safe to travel the corridors of your mind? You know? And sometimes the corridors of my mind are not safe. The judgments I have, the assumptions I make, the unkindnesses that I think. And mostly, I act pretty good, but that's not even 100%. You know, I mean, many of us, it's, you know, driving, long lines at the store, things that just set me off. And I'm not kind all the time. And, and I, I like to think that most of the time I am, but there are times when I'm not. You know... Nowadays, it seems especially, and maybe this is always true, maybe just I'm more aware of it now, of all the negativity that seems to be in the social media, if you, if you follow Facebook or Instagram or some of those things, there seems to be a lot of posts, you know, we got a lot of political stuff going on, number one, and who's on what camp and who's with who and who's, you know, who's liking who and who's not liking who. And even among my family and friends, you know, some of their Facebook posts are, ee, not so kind. You know, not so loving. And I really want to be aware of what it is that I'm putting out there in the world. What it is that I'm allowing into my consciousness. You know, so I try to be careful of what it is that I watch. I try to be careful of the pages that I follow on Facebook. I mean, my pages are all pretty ooey-gooey. I mean, I follow like Buddha Doodles and uh, uh, Positive Thinking and Ernest Holmes and Louise Hayes and... and uh, uh, Peaceful mind, peaceful lives, that's one I like. But most of what I follow is things that are inspiring. When I turn on my Facebook page, it's like quote after quote after quote of good, uplifting things. And that feeds me. That feeds me. I'm putting in to my consciousness what it is that I want to be putting back out into the world. I try not to read the negativity. I, I subscribe to the Good News Network. And it's kind of like the Hallmark Channel, you know? It's all gooey and, and ooey and full of love and all the wonderful things that people do in the world because there is so much good that's happening. What are we focusing on? We're focusing on the good. Today an article came up while I was preparing my talk, and it was an article of a teacher 
that had sent home a note to an autistic boy who had failed terribly in his test. But her note home to his parents was, this guy is fabulous. He is so wonderful at A, B, C, D, E, and E. You know, she, she named all the things he was great at. Being a friend, being loving, he was a great artist. You know, those kind of stories where we focus on what's right, not what's, what's wrong. Because that's what we're creating. We're creating more of what it is that we're focusing on. We know that, right? Science of Mind 101. What we think is what we create. The Dalai Lama, he says kindness is his religion. And I like that. If it's good for the Dalai Lama, you know, it's good for me. Kindness is my religion. I like it because it's so simple, but it's so powerful. You know, if each of us could put away all of our dogma and doctrine or whatever it is that we think that we have to do to be good and simply be a little kinder. Wouldn't the world be a great place? Simply by each of us just being a little kinder. The Buddha lists the benefits of kindness. The Buddha says this. Number one, you will sleep easily. Number two, you will wake easily. Number three, you will have pleasant dreams. Number four, you will love you. Number five, divas, which are celestial beings, and animals will love you. Divas will protect you. Eternal dangers like poison, weapons, and fire will not harm you. Your face will be radiant. Your mind will be serene. You will die unconfused, and you'll be reborn in happy realms. That's the Buddha's teaching on the benefits of kindness. It's a pretty good deal. By just being a little bit kinder, that's a, some pretty good things can happen to you there. You remember a few years back, really, when random acts of kindness was really kind of a thing, and everybody was doing random acts of kindness, and you would go to Starbucks. This happened a lot at Starbucks. I don't know why, or maybe I just spent a lot of time at Starbucks. But you'd be in the line for the drive through and the person in front of you paid for your drink. And the only thing was you would pass it on. And they would sometimes go for cars and cars and cars before somebody had to pay for their drink because everybody was paying it forward or backward, you know, to the car behind them. Or we would have that for a while where everybody had those little cards that said you've just received a random act of kindness or you've just received a blessing or you make a difference or you are important. And you would just get these like little love notes wherever you went, on your car, on your desk. People were paying attention to the little things, to the little random acts of kindness, you know, there's so many ways that we can show kindness, so many things that we can do, all, all kinds of things. You know, you hold the door open for somebody in, in, in a store, you know, help them carry their packages, uh, let the person go in front of you in the shopping line, you know, do you see that face light up and you have this cart full of food and they have two things and you say, go ahead of me, like they're so happy. They can go ahead of you. You know, just the little things that make you feel good. Return the shopping cart to the place it's supposed to go. That makes you feel really good inside when you do that, as opposed to leaving it in the curb to cut into somebody else's car. You know, it's those little things. I have a friend who always helps senior citizens. Now, it, I got to admit, sometimes it's like, come on, we got to go. We got to go. Don't be stopping to help. If there's a senior that's broken down on the side of the road, I'll guarantee you if I'm in the car with the person, we're stopping no matter where we're going, you know? If there's a senior that's carrying packages into the post office, we're waiting and opening the door, you know? And, and it's a reminder to me, it's those simple things. And here I'm supposed to be this minister, right? This kind person, and I'm impatient at the fact that he's stopping to help somebody. The little things, the little things that matter. And they're so easy to do. That's the thing. They're so easy to do. Reverend Jeff Anderson is the one who wrote the outline for tonight's talk, and he says this, and I think he says it so beautifully that I am going to read it to you. Where we place our attention expands. It can be easy in our world today to get caught up in the challenges and to allow those to become our dominant thought patterns. We are at choice always as to where we focus our thought where we place the majority of our attention. That then becomes the practice, to choose loving kindness each day by extending a kindness, forgiving an error, finding something beautiful to behold. We choose to live not only from the mind, but from the heart, 
pulsating with feeling, as Dr. Holmes says, choosing love again and again, regardless of situation, circumstance, or appearance. Choosing loving kindness. So what are you choosing? Are you getting caught up, up in the grumblings of the political campaign? No, are you listening to the negativity? Are you viewing acts of aggression and violence? What TV shows are you choosing to watch? Are you watching the news? Now, I don't say don't watch the news, but are you watching it obsessively? Do you ever notice when, like, uh, the fires, for instance, when we have the fires and the reporter is over and over and over and over again saying the same thing and looking for the drama and the, turn it off. Turn it off. Allow yourself to return to that center. Allow yourself to return to that place of knowing it is the divine that moves through you and in you and as you and that you live in this world of good. What are you focusing on? What are you focusing on? There is a line in the 12-step literature that just always grabbed my attention. And it's, it's written for those that think they're, um, they haven't been as bad as others, perhaps. And the line goes like this. It says, gossip barbed with anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination. You know, when we think about that, we may not be physically harming anybody. We may not out be out doing violence, but are we participating in gossip? Are we talking about our neighbor? Are we talking about our office mate? Are we gathered in circles where people are putting others down? Or do we choose to walk away? Do we choose not to participate in that? Little acts of kindness. Little things that any of us can do every single day to put something good into the world to add to the love, to add to the kindness, to add to all that is good in the world. There's a beautiful book called The Power of Kindness. Piero Ferrucci is the gentleman's name. He's anything by him I recommend. It's fabulous. I was introduced to these books in ministerial school through Reverend Alice Bandy. It's one of the authors that she's turned us on to. Many authors like Parker Palmer and others. She really brought these books to our attention in school. But this book on the power of kindness is so fabulous. He talks about the qualities of kindness. He talks about that there's 18 interlocking qualities that make up kindness. And he talks about real kindness. He talks about real kindness versus faked pretend kindness. You know, that kind where you're doing something begrudgingly. You know, and he warns against that. He says this about his book. My thesis is that true kindness is a strong, genuine, warm way of being. It is the result of the interplay among several qualities, such as warmth, trust, patience, loyalty, gratitude, and many others. He says that people often ask me what is the most effective trans technique for transforming their lives. It is a little embarrassing, he says, that after years and years of research and experimentation, I have to say that the best answer is just be a little kinder. Just be a little kinder. He warns, as I said, against being a doormat or a fake. He says weakness can masquerade sometimes as kindness. You can say yes when you mean no. You go along because you want to be nice. You acqu acquiesce because you are afraid. A person who's too good and submissive ends up a loser. So he's not talking about that. He's talking about real, true, genuine kindness. He has, his book is full of stories of kindness. He tells a story of a, uh, his neighbor. His neighbor who every time him and his family, he lives in Italy, he lives outside of Florence, his Italian family, and he travels often for his work. And every time he has to go to the airport, his neighbor drives him. His neighbor drives him in his car, the man's car, Ferrucci's car, takes him to the airport, brings his car home, puts it in the garage, takes out the battery for him if it's going to be a long time before he drives it. When, the gent when Ferrucci returns, his neighbor puts the battery in the car, drives to the airport, and picks him up and brings him home. Does that every time. Will not take anything for it. Doesn't want anything for it. He simply does it as an act of kindness. 
He tells a story of another woman who works with elders. And she went into uh, one of the old folks' homes or one of the elder homes, and, and there was a woman there who wasn't eating, who couldn't eat, who was just in such depression. Her family didn't come to visit her. Her children didn't come to visit her. She was just one of those waiting to die. And this woman, Melina, she went in and she sat with her and she talked with her. And she talked to her about the children that didn't come to visit her. And she just sat and she really listened to her. And then she, she knew that the woman was having a hard time eating. So somehow this inspiration came to her to get her some ice cream. So she went and got her a bowl of ice cream. And the woman was able to eat the ice cream. It was soft and it was cool and it went down easy. And as Melina sat with the lady, she watched her come alive. She watched the color rise in her cheeks. She watched her being able to talk a little bit more and a little bit more. And Melina continued to visit her and pay attention to her and simply be kind to her. And the woman flourished. She came alive. She was no longer just sitting there depressed and waiting to die. Simply by that act of kindness. So in what we believe in the science of mind, we state that we believe in eternal loving kindness. Now, Ernest said this before Ferrucci, before some of the other, before the Dalai Lama, you know, that Ernest talked a lot about that idea of simply being of service, of getting outside of ourselves, of being that love. Ernest writes it like this in the book, Ideas for Living. Ernest says, love overlooks the little differences that we have and finds a point of reconciliation with other. Love creates tolerance and human understanding, without which we become really divided against ourselves and without which we almost unconsciously become filled with criticism, condemnation, and false judgment. When we were able to reach out beyond the indifferences and coldness of life, reach through all the intolerance and unkindness, only then do we meet the divine center, which is forever established within every person. When we were able to reach through the intolerance and unkindness, when we were able to recognize that love, now, I encourage you this week to look at where it is that you're holding a judgment, where it is that you're holding a criticism, where it is that you can let go of that which keeps you separate from anyone else, where it is that can you just be a little bit kinder, offer a hand, a smile. A small act of kindness goes a very far, far way. So I encourage you to, to stay open to your life this week where it is that you might be able to just do a little something to add a little kindness to the world. Thank you. Thank you. Glad that you're here. Thank you. I'm going to ask Jim and Ari to come up. They're singing a song that I asked them to sing. I'm very grateful. Thank you. So welcome to the stage. Here they are. All righty. Thank you. I have to give you the right key. <laughs> my religion is kindness. My church is nature. My God is a feeling that lives deep inside. My job is to be conscious. My path is forgiveness. My religion is kindness. And I practice every day. Everyone has a story, everyone has pain When we strip our masks we find we really are the same It's those things we say and do that can mean so much It's a smile, it's a connection, a simple love and touch My religion is kindness, my church is nature My God is a feeling deep down inside my job is to be conscious, my path is forgiveness, my religion is kindness, and I practice every day. 
Today I'm gonna ask myself, what more can I do to be a radiant child of God and let my life shine through? Gonna let my heart be my guide to give the best of me. I'm gonna share my joy and share my love, give it boundlessly. My religion is kindness, my church is nature. My God is a feeling that lives deep inside. My job is to be conscious. My path is forgiveness. My religion is kindness, and I practice every day. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown. Jill came running after. She said, Jack, tell me, what can I do to help you ease your mind? He, he said, said, hold my hand. Just be kind. I know. I'll be fine. My religion is kindness. My church is nature. My God is a feeling deep down inside my job is to be conscious my path is forgiveness my religion is kindness and i practice every day my religion is kindness my church is nature my god is a feeling that lives deep inside my job is to be conscious my path is forgiveness my religion is kindness and i practice Day. My religion is kindness, and I practice every day. Yeah. Yes! Uh -huh. Thank you! Thank you, Aria. It's a good old Karen Drucker song. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. My religion is kindness, and I practice it every day. Let's, before we go on, let's do our affirmation together. Do we have it, Melanie? Steve, there we are. Our affirmation for tonight. Please join me. I am a channel of loving kindness today and always. One more time. I am a channel of loving kindness today and always. And so it is. Yay. Welcome. Good. Well, I think it's time for our offering. Is that what we do next? I think so. <laughs> I invite our ushers to come forward. Welcome back, Dennis. We missed you and Jenny. They were on vacation. Thank you so much. And thank you, Karen and Linda, for filling in and being Jenny and Dennis for a couple weeks. You did a great job. Thank you. So it's the time of our offering. It's a time that we get to practice that law of reciprocity. As you give, you receive. Certainly not the reason to give, but it gets that well running, and it gets the water running, and as we put it out into the world, it comes back. Please know that everything that you give to Seaside goes to support Seaside as a whole, supports the Wednesday night service, and all that Seaside does. And that Seaside is a tithing community. 10% of everything that we receive, we put back out into the world. So please know that uh, we are good stewards of anything that it is that you're able to give. So let's join together in our prosperity prayer. It is? There it is. As I give thanks for the good now flowing into my life, I gladly share that good with others. The more I give, the more I receive. I experience a deeper consciousness of peace and security, for I know that I am in the embrace of a warm, loving presence, forever seeking an outlet through me. My cup runneth over. I exist in limitless possibilities. Thank you. Just a breath away, 
nothing.